The Companion is a 1994 thriller directed by Gary Fletter and starring Catherine Harold, Bruce Greenwood, Talia Balsam, Brian James, Jolie Fisher, Brian Cranston, Earl Bowen, and James Karen. Hi, Sarah. Gillian is an author working PR for her new romance novel. My guest today, Gillian Tanner, best-selling author of Beyond the Tempest and now September of the Heart, new on CD-ROM and available at fine computer and bookstores everywhere. CD-ROM? That's some Jedi Temple shit right there. This is one of those in-the-not-too-distant-future movies, which means we get to see how badly they guessed our tech. Gillian heads to her boyfriend's apartment and encounters a smoking-in-bed post-coitus cliché. Can you tell me where I might find him? Gillian, I'm the one who knocks. But you could have at least knocked. And she leaves. Sadness. Seriously, is this just a movie thing? How many of you have personally signed a picture to... anyone? Especially your lady friend. Gillian goes with her editor Charlene to meet James fucking Karen! What sort of companion are you considering? Well, I haven't been around that many. They make me feel kind of uncomfortable. Is she buying a vibrator? I then the film proceeds to rip off Blade Runner. What do you mean? <laughs> They're almost as human as you or I. You're not. Me? Oh, heavens, no, dear lady, no. But Alan, she's a G45 companion. Anatomically correct, fully functional in every area of human services, and featuring cutting-edge software. Now, what would be your primary requirements? Probably hung like a horse. Well, actually, I just want something basic. Of course, I understand completely. Man, you may not want to do that. You'll end up with Rob the fucking robot. You are missing the boat here, Gil. Now, the name? Excuse me? His name, please. How about Fido? That's basic. Here's Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey, uh, let's go. Where? Just follow me, Jeffrey. This is just a fucking DOS game. The speed limit here is 80 miles per hour, Miss Tanner. Yes, it is, Jeffrey. But so what? Because there's a highway speed patrol detection device one half mile ahead, Miss Tanner. He's a fuzzbuster too? Bitchin'. They're heading to a cab and stopping at a market manned by Tracy Walter. Oh shit, townies. Um, so, do you live around here? Tracy. Well, uh, as of today, yeah, I guess so. Up on the ridge, I think it's called the Bower Place. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> That's fantastic. That makes I bet Brian James turns out to be an asshole. Listen, it would be really great if the two of you could come over for dinner sometime. I mean, our cabins are so close together. So as soon as we get settled, we'll give you a call. Okay. Cool. She's not going to call. They arrived at the cabin, and that's right, it's the fucking Jarvis house. Three o'clock, I want you to bring me a cup of coffee and one piece of chocolate from the box marked chocolates. Yes, of course, Gillian. Can you stop saying, yes, of course, and yes, Gillian, after everything you say? This is going great. That night... Yeah! Holy shit! Susan didn't start off mistrusting Alex. Although, in retrospect, intuition should have warned her against any man who had so ready an answer for everything. There's no way 1994 text-to-speech worked that well. Christ, it doesn't even work now. What are you doing, Jeffrey? I'm waiting, Gillian. Waiting? You said three o'clock. Personality. Current level zero percent, change level two. One hundred. This is going to void your warranty. Wireless charging. It worked, I guess. Um. Jeffrey, I'd like to have a glass of wine. Okay. Okay? Something wrong? No. 
Um, and, uh, and I'd like to have it out on the patio. You got it, Gil. They have dinner and, hey, maybe you should pay your power bill. I am the danger. I'm, uh, I'm looking for Gillian Tanner. Do you know if she's staying up here? Yes, I do. Oh, shit. So, Jeffrey, what do you do exactly? Do you take care of the grounds for Miss Tanner? I take care of all her needs. I'm her companion. Alan? How did you find me? Easy. It's that house that that guy that killed all those kids was chopped up by Corey Feldman in. Alan wants to talk, but is denied. Then he gets Alan, aggressive. Frankly, it ticks me off. You know, I detest guys like you. Guys who move in on women when they're vulnerable. Attractive women. Confused women. And Alan, most you're acting like it. Most importantly, Jeffy, are you listening? Other guys' women. Jeffrey, make Yet you were banging someone in your apartment. Stop. <gasps> Holy shit! He fucked around and found out. There are some Amityville levels of wood chopping going on. You're a thirsty rider, aren't you? Here's where it starts. A hundred percent? You're not going to be able to walk! Picnic time. Gil goes swimming, and because she's cheap and didn't get the software, Jeffrey gets overprotective. Go ahead. Go. Great. You smell like algae now. And she gets it on with her sex robot. Say, I love you, Gil. I'll love you forever. I love you, Gil. I'll love you forever. This is getting weird. The next day, Stacy shows up inviting them to dinner. See, I told you Gil wasn't going to call. I bet something bad happens at that dinner. Steady. Holy shit! We may live without friends, we may live without books, but civilized man cannot live without cooks. Baron Edward Lytton. I accessed Bartlett's familiar quotations as you suggested. Great. Uh Stop acting weird. What the hell am I missing here? You're busted. Ron invites Gil to look at some shit and, uh... Does that mean we're not eating? Then she programs him to be the perfect man. I like all my machines to operate unpredictably. Jailbreak that bitch. Jesus, handsy much? Where's Jeffrey? He went out. He went out? What do you mean? He likes to go for long walks by himself in the woods. He's probably killing small animals or something. How's the book coming? What? <laughs> You're sleeping with him, aren't you? Now she's concerned about her having sex with a robot. Jeffrey arrives and lays down the law. Then Charlene leaves. Gillian is happy. Sure. Sure, she's going to be a lot happier when I get her away from you. I was fully expecting that sequence to end with a murder. I mean, I think we should be, we should be spontaneous. We should, we, should, I, we should go to the lake. Yeah, we should go to the lake. Right, we'll have a picnic. We'll have a picnic, okay? We can have chicken... I really need to Google how to do a hard reset. Gil makes a break for it and... 
oh, I guess there was a murder. Since she owns him and manipulated his programming, will that make her liable in Charlene's death? This is love. And things continue to go downhill, eventually hitting Night of the Living Dead levels. Jeffrey goes to the market and there's Ron. Ron then goes to the house and is this the hero you're really looking for? That door to that poor cabin. Every fucking movie I've seen it gets destroyed by some asshole. know how this is going to end. Goodbye, Ron. <laughs> Holy shit! The next morning, Gil plays a change of heart and wants to go on a picnic. Probably to swim away. There she goes! <laughs> you got played, son. She returns to the house for clothes and keys, and oh shit. I guess he can self-terminate. <laughs> you lied! You gonna wait until his memory was fucked to walk in the room? There's a chase in the woods and they end up at Ron's. I bet that rock gun comes into play. There it is. Don't forget to recycle your electronics. In the companion, there's a good story there, but doesn't quite make the cut. If this was just like an hour-long episode of an anthology series, it would be great. As a feature, it just feels empty, like you could have filled in some shit somewhere. It just needs a little bit more to push it over the top. Sure, it rips off a lot of shit, but kind of finds a way to make it its own. This is a movie that had a lot of stuff right. It just couldn't put it all together. You know, Gil, you're not a very easy person to live with.